Good. I'm going to sand that up, put some friction polish on it, finish the handle. So. One thing I want to point out here, when you're sanding the tip here, make sure that you do not sand a chamfer on this inside joint right here. You want this face and this shoulder to be as close to 90 degrees as you can get without round over. You don't want to sand a, a round over because this is what catches on the rim. And if you get any kind of a chamfer on this side right here, it's going to flip off. This is what catches this spot right here. So you want this to be nice and square from your shaft here to the back side of your point to the face. Nice and square and even. That's your catcher. So be careful when you're sanding inside. You can see there, that's not quite exactly what the measurement should be. There's a little bit of a gap there, so I missed that measurement by a little bit. It's pretty important to get the gap between the edge of the top and your catcher pretty close to what you want because that's what catches and gauges on the rim of the catch tower. I don't think that'll be a problem. As you can see on this one, it's a little bit off also. So, that's not that. As long as you're not any more than that, you're good. Because this one catches every time. See, this one's off a little bit too. So, but try to stick to that as much as you can. discovered from making these tops that the handle part, the little part you grip in your fingers to spin it, you don't want to sand that. You want it rough. Because if you don't, it'll slide in your fingertips. You won't get a good grip on it. You won't get as good a spin. So I just make it leave that rough. That's a tip for my Patreon members.
Okay, we've got our catch top down, we've got it sanded, we got it ready to part off. The last thing I'm going to do is put some friction polish on it. And I'm not going to go through a lot of detail on friction polish because everybody knows how friction polish I mean, works. See, I just rub it on there. You want to get lots on the tip. You want the tip to be nice and shiny and smooth. get the gist of friction polish okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to part this thing off and start on the catch tower Okay, remember I said I didn't want the handle, this part right here, I didn't want it sanded. I want to be able to pinch it in my fingers and get a good grip on it. So I'm just going to make it rough cut. I think the handle could have been a little bit bigger, but that's good. You see how I like to get it in my fingers, between my finger and my thumb, and that way I can give it a good twist. That seems to really work. But okay, now we're pretty much finished with the top. Let's move on to the catch tower. Okay? Okay, we're going to use a Faustner bit to drill, drill out the bowl. See that line? That tells me how far to drill in with the Faustner bit. The only important part 
on the catch tower dish is this part right here you want to make sure that when the catcher hooks the rim this part of is nice and straight so you don't want to start your bend your dish shape your bowl shape until after the dome of your because if you have too much it ends up in this position it won't catch so you can see all of these it's right here so I'm gonna start my dish shape about right there Okay, that's a nice shape. It's a pretty piece of wood too. Okay, this is the tenon that goes in the base mortem. So act accordingly. You want the inside, this part right here, the very bottom of your catch dish. You want that to be flat or just a little bit concave. Want that bottom nice and smooth now. Like the top itself, you want these corners on your rim to be nice and square. You do not want to round over inside here because that will give that a chance to, to ride off. See that? It rides off if, it's, if you've got a chamfer on that. So be careful that you just get a nice square edge there. See, I've almost got it rounded over too much. What I normally do to keep that from happening is when I'm drilling my hole with my Forstner bit, I drill a little bit extra depth. That way when I'm finished sanding the inside here, if I do inadvertently put a little chamfer on that, I can cut it off and bring it down to my right side, my right size, and it'll be nice and square. You want the you want the inside of the rim here smooth also so that this edge of your top moves around it okay without getting any catches on it
Now I'm ever so gently just going to cut this rim off just a little. Okay, we're all done with the uh, catch tower. Turned out pretty nice. I'm pleased with it. I had a slight audio-visual malfunction there at the end of the instructional part of this video. It seems that the battery quit on both of my cameras pretty much at the same time. So unfortunately, you didn't get to see me parting off the little catch tower. But as you can see, this is just a simple base, nothing fancy. And this is the little catch tower completed. You can see the little tenon there on the end. It fits right in the base. And there you go. <clears throat> the catch tower and the catch top. Completed. A couple of uh, conclusions to this. <clears throat> Let me check my notes here. You probably didn't notice, but when I was drilling out the little hole for the bowl with my Fossner bit, I, the tip was cut off of it. My Fossner bit that I used to drill out the catch bowl, I ground the tip off of it so it doesn't leave a hole in the bottom of the catch tower. So you want to make sure if you're going to do that grind that off so there's no hole there. You want to make sure when you're doing yours, if you're not following my instructions, that you want to make sure that the diameter of your bowl, of your top, is bigger than your catch tower. You want it you can see that it's bigger so that when it catches it'll fall off okay you don't want a big bowl and a little top because what will happen is it'll just sit there on the rim like this it won't fall off and catch also also when you're doing the inside walls of your catch bowl the part right here don't make the walls parallel to the outside. Make them a little bit slanted inward so that the top rim is a little bit wider than the bottom. Makes it easier for the catcher to catch the rim. I learned that after doing several. I had several failures. probably can't see but I'll just explain it to you this one the failure on this one is I rounded over the edges on the little catcher they're not square so that turned out to be an issue combined with the fact that this is made out of pine it's very light and I did find that weight is an issue the heavier catch tops work way better than the light ones. This one here, I made the little catcher way too thin. You can probably see that, but it's 
the catcher is way too thin it's not thick enough and it's also too light this this one it was a failure um, so there's a good reason to follow the instructions that I laid out weight is an issue and if you notice on the instructions I put down the weight of my um, catch top that works every time of course except when I tip it over so you probably saw in the video that I used this little template right here to make my tops well that worked out so well I decided to go to the club and use the laser there and I made these these are sweet see that see that right there it's got everything you need right there on it for the for the catch top so what I decided I'm gonna do is I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel I've got about 625 now so I decided that every tenth person who subscribes I'm gonna send one of these to you free so every time I get a subscriber I get an email saying that someone subscribed so starting with the first one that I get once this video hits the airways every tenth one I'm going to send one of these two free and if you're and if you subscribe and you're not lucky enough to be the tenth one and you want one you can go to my patreon channel you can make a donation of ten dollars or more and I'll send you one of these free I guess you're wondering what this material is on my desk here. Well, this is the material I'm getting ready to start my next video. It's going to be mineral inlay. And you won't want to miss that one because I'm known for my mineral inlay. I've been doing mineral inlay for about seven years and um, I'm getting pretty good at it. But I had a good teacher, Stephen Hatcher. He's the penultimate mineral inlay guy. And uh, I took a class from him a week at Aramont. That was cool. And ever since, that was probably seven years ago, ever since, man, I've been a fool for mineral inlay. So that's going to be my next series is everything about mineral inlay. So you don't want to miss that. So that wraps it up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the little bell button so you get my next videos. This is Wood Pops on Spinning Tops. See you around.